Good afternoon, friends and colleagues. Um, in fact, uh, we know we are mindful that you know we stand between uh, y'all and lunch, so we promise to make it quick. Um, you know, I'll uh, skip the uh, preamble for now. You know, because I guess uh, we have already briefed a lot. We have also seen how you know technology, uh, how NBFCs are leveraged on technology, and uh, literally, you know, it has transformed and revolutionized almost every area of operations. Include, including uh, dispute resolution. So uh, moving over, we'll uh, begin with Molly. Uh, we can uh, probably uh, you know, start off with discussing what are the ethical considerations that uh, you know, organizations look into while uh, implementing tech-centric dispute resolution uh, uh, you know, mechanisms and platforms. So, yeah. Uh, before we get into the question, uh, let me thank ELITS for uh, organizing this summit and uh, inviting us to give our uh, two cents or two thoughts on the topic and specifically Sebastian for agreeing to be the moderator for this panel discussion. Coming to the question, uh, what uh, ethical considerations that we can take, the first and foremost is your data privacy and security concerns. Uh, of course, there are multiple laws around it, the latest one being the Data Protection Act. Uh, the government is trying for us to not misuse customer data. And uh, that's where we can, we can actually comfort the customer by, not, uh, by having a consent, first of all, specific consent that we can use their data and giving them the comfort and understanding how your data will be used for uh, this dispute resolution mechanism. We can have the explicit consent. There should be transparency. So these AI AML models that are there, they should be transparent enough so that in case your auditors, your, uh, co the company itself, the NBFC itself, or the customer requests to understand how the decision was made, they can actually go back to the models and step by step, it is so transparent that you can understand how the decision was concluded. Uh, other thing could be accountability. Uh, there should be very clear accountability that should be fixed uh, in case there are certain issues. There's also the uh, aspect of bias that comes in in these models. Uh, this is a worldwide uh, phenomenon that happens and how to control it. Sometimes when you have a very smaller group who, who develop these models, uh, they could not take into consideration certain aspects, which in the longer run could, uh, uh, could bring in bias. Uh, it could be gender, it could be ethnic, it could be your skin color. And having a larger group uh, feed data into these models, it would be helpful to actually uh, remove this, this bias that happens in these models. There should be, of course, uh, continuous uh, monitoring that should happen. Uh, once developed does not mean that uh, it's done and dusted. Annual audits can be there to check there is fairness. There has to be inclusivity in the sense that even people who, are, uh, not, who do not have access to technology or internet should be given a chance to actually uh, be part of this uh, dispute resolution mechanism. I think uh, that's about it. And educating the customer last is, is continuous education. Uh, give the comfort to the customer, educate them how the process is, how their data will be used. Uh, you purge that data, data retention and uh, deletion once the data has been used for this respective purpose. It will be purged and there'll be data security so that hacking and these scenarios do not occur. So that's my thoughts on the topic. Very interesting. Uh, in fact, I'll move uh, to you, Manoj. If uh, you know, you could throw some light on what uh, could be the pro possible apprehensions, or uh, you know, what you see uh, in automating dispute resolution, and what uh, impact you could see on human interaction or the human touch in dispute uh, resolution. Thanks, Sebastian. So. Uh, as we all know, technology is moving at an unprecedented pace, and you know businesses are relying on software for uh, increasing efficiencies, reducing cost, and automating tasks. Um, concern is with those people who uh, you know are not very tech savvy, or um, you know feel difficulties in uh, navigating through applications or tools. 
but human touch is very important it is not disappearing it is transforming there has to be a proper balance between automation and uh, human touch um, you know that will bring wonders so if you see predictable predictable behaviors can be catered through automation unpredictable behaviors need human touch so human intervention is required um, uh, wherever you know uh, there is Uh, an uncharted or a versatile or a complex scenario it cannot be handled through automation so marriage between or a synergy between automation and human touch uh, is very important um, building understanding you know uh, with the customer educating the customer uh, creating awareness uh, for the customers on how technology can help them uh, you know for dispute resolution Uh, will also help to uh, you know resolve issues in a amicable manner and swiftly and of course it is a win win for both the lenders and the customers um, and if if you ask me about um, with the changes that are happening in the system uh, we need to ensure that um, you know there is a proper uh, you know documentary uh, loan agreement that is that is there Uh, online ag- arrangements have clearly spelled out in the agreement so that you know there is no uh, you know changes that we do at the last minute when the dispute arises so i think uh, in a nutshell future is innovation uh, future is brighter when innovation meets human touch and human emotions so so that's my take on this yeah that's great uh in fact uh, you know we had a long conversation with soham and he was in fact orienting us with some of these uh, solutions which he has successfully implemented in several financial companies and banks uh, maybe soham if you could you know just throw some light to our participants here yeah sure so three parts of the cycle right the dispute arises the day somebody does not pay his emi that's due and there after what are the steps that happen for each dpd so you have notice intimations which are sent out which is uh, something that banks and nbfcs are really doing you have collection efforts and you have litigation so i'll talk a little bit about all three aspects the first is notices today using technology i feel notices need to move beyond being one way communications earlier when you had physical rpads going out it's so daunting for a normal retail borrower who's maybe taken 1 lakh 2 lakh rupees in loan to understand what do i do with this legal intimation right so we need to make these more communicative we need to create informal channels where somebody can communicate back with the bank or nbfc as well today when you send out a thousand rpads what is the deliverability of these rpads what is the like to share some statistics like we have a platform that does digital delivery and physical delivery physical delivery is just about 60% so 40 people are not even receiving the rpd forget reading it there is no means to when we use whatsapp email it's easy for customers to write back to respond to you and for your collections team to get an insight as to what is the traceability of the customer where does he like to be contacted and how do we take this discussion forward what are his issues so that's one on the notice management aspect that's where technology and using these digital means and using technology solutions will really help second is on the collection side again collections throughout the process there's a lot of automation that can be brought in over there to support collections team all of these processes will always have a very heavy service element you know adding to what was just highlighted that this is not going to be automated models where they can do everything automatically there is always going to be a human element a service element because every borrower's challenge will be different and you need a human at the other side to be able to understand the borrower's challenge right but that said how do you make your collection field efforts more fruitful how do you manage these large collections teams that you have that is where platforms like spocto creditgenix creditmate are really going to play a role and help you optimize that the third is litigation litigation traditionally has been you know looked at as you go into court you do a section 138 you do a surface and you do arbitrations arbitrations were also majorly physical in nature i think there's a lot of credit to the financial institutions to really use arbitration as a very strong tool 
to reduce the burden on courts and to solve retail disputes which are not very large in value i think the financial institutions have really taken onus to do that and platforms like resolve 360 really help in digitizing the entire process so again when you're doing arbitrations is it feasible to ask a customer in mumbai to come to chennai and participate in a physical hearing probably not you're really discouraging him from participating on the other hand by using zoom gmeet teams if we can get him to participate from the comfort of his home the probability of actually coming to some sort of settlement or some sort of resolution is going to increase a lot more so that's my take where all of these efforts are going to be human in nature but technology will make it more reachable more participative and hence will actually help in resolving more disputes rather than litigating them thank you thank you so uh, so like uh, i guess the uh, you know the takeaways from your discussion is this audit trail that you're mentioning about you know with digitization of the proceedings uh, the comfort for uh, customers right to uh, participate in arbitration proceedings yeah, so yeah that's uh, i guess the two big uh, takeaways from you know your response uh now moving to amit uh if amit could you know uh, kind of orient everyone and what are the regulatory considerations that one needs to you know ensure before implementing tech centric uh, dispute resolution platforms such as uh, you know prisolve yeah yeah good afternoon to all <clears throat> see i will i'll say that molly has covered you know the ethical ethical aspects the regulation in a, you know if you will find it in the digital digital forum and all so it comes out of the practices and only so first of all for digitalizations of dispute reducible uh, mechanism first of all we have to understand you know the, we have to create a atmosphere of faith belief equality justice then only the you know the regulations will work if you will come up directly on the regulations rbi has you know in 2015 itself if you look at they have said you know ki uh, the customer data customer informations must be taken only on on specific as well as you know consent there they have said implied and express both the both the consents now if you look at you know in a, in, a, in a recently in a, in a uh, just uh, Six months back, they have they have given a circular where they have said you know the group group lending and all. Uh, in that they said, referring that 2015 circular, they say you know ki you need to have a express consent from the customer before parting the their their informations and all. So in a in a in a dispute resolutions processes also you need to have you know the consent for for parting the information. If you look at Arbitration Act. there is also you know the arbitrator need to have a uh, under protections they have to sign a confidential agreement if you look at the recent uh, introduced uh, mediations law act 2023 this has just on 29th the few portions is being on oh, sorry 9th of october few few provisions including 1 to 29 so some some uh, major major portions is being notified now it's a, it's a, it's implemented in the particular things they still say you know ki you need to have a uh, protections of, of of data data and all so regulatory is the protection of data you know they, the the informations of the customer must be though if you will look at in the uh, uh, di- digital di- digital protections uh, you know data and all they say you know if it's a matter is ne- on on disputes and all if the customer is a you know uh, disorder customers not in not, not in paying regularly so you can disclose the data as per the uh, as per the requirements and all but still regulations will follow after some time if you look at you know the very recently uh, uh, this uh, mighty ministry of information technology has uh, has asked for you know the robotics uh, the strategy national strategy on robotics then still it's uh, in the in the very new sense uh, new nuance stage now you all people can give a comment up to 31st of october the 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 date is deadline is there for giving comments so we have to have a, you know the molly has said you know the 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 ethics kind of things so basing on that ethics rbi has given certain guidelines and will come up in a later stage in a bigger bigger manner kind of things thanks thanks amit 
uh i'll move over to you uh, soham uh if you could you know just throw some uh, insights on you know global best practices uh on uh, you know online or digital uh, dispute resolution oh absolutely i think lending disputes is a phenomenon that is applicable worldwide uh and one of the key things that we were discussing before this panel was how identity and identification of identity parameters like address name phone number email address reachability these are such big challenges so there i'd like to mention a use case of estonia so what estonia has done is they have tied in all of their um they've used blockchain to create this identity mechanism where all of their public databases are tied into that identity so say today if you have one unique id your gas subsidy is also linked to that unique id and your loan is also linked to that unique id so your benefits and your liabilities both sides are linked to that unique id and all your smart smart contracts are linked to that unique identity so this is one big use case in actually resolving or reducing the disputes itself where you know traceability of customers if we have something like this on the back of aadhar would really change things for banks and bfcs where at least you now don't have a problem in tracing the customer that's one second is if you look at countries like canada for disputes that are less than 5000 dollars they have created a separate tribunal which is an out of court mechanism altogether right their parties can participate directly there is no requirement for lawyers to participate and the adjudication is done on pure logic in terms of who is right who is wrong because these are simple contractual disputes right and here they will only rule on the contractual dispute that yes this was a contractual dispute so party a should pay party b this they will not talk about mental harassment they will not talk about damage you know that could have happened because of reputational damage etc it's simple sorting out of contractual disputes they've taken this completely out of the ambit of the courts now imagine a situation like india where there are so many disputes in our courts if we are able to implement things like this which are essentially alternative dispute resolution mechanisms make a lot of these things online so they are easily accessible to people across the country and they don't carry a huge infrastructure cost and infrastructure burden these are you know a few examples that i came across that have really changed the game internationally and i think the same can be done here the way you have that you know 20 lakhs ke upar banks have to go to drt let's also have something where 7 lakhs ke niche there is no way that you are going to a court let's have a simple mechanism to resolve these disputes and really get enforcement of you know justice in favor of whoever is right the it be the, it may be the borrower or it may be the lender yeah i guess that's uh, also something which echoes the need of the air uh speedy resolution and speedy enforcement yeah that's uh, something that you know we all have in common like you know when we are discussing in our pre panel uh, panel discussion uh molly like one uh, question uh we've been talking a lot on how we'll handle dispute uh, resolution through you know these digital solutions uh what is your thoughts on uh, you know using data analytics and ai to actually prevent uh, you know nbfcs from such uh, you know having such uh, disputes and uh, grievances at a later date yeah, how we can predict you know disputes and yeah avoid so first we'll cover the prediction part uh, most nbfcs thanks to the regulations are already employing some kind of ai to actually understand about the customer before the loan is sanctioned and during the life cycle of the loan uh, examples could be the fraud detection that is our strs basically uh, we have early warning signs we have a civil uh, score the credit worthiness but we can go a step further and why not uh, check his digital footprint uh, his social media accounts using these ai aml techniques uh, check the overall credit worthiness of the customer on a real time basis there are questions that comes up like if once i've given him the loan what's the point now if he is defaulting with some other borrower how do i use that but that's where it will come under the second category of prevention now i already know he's he's somebody who defaults i can be better prepared to actually handle an upcoming litigation or a dispute uh, we can 
uh, uh, predict uh, further if by understanding if he's a litigious customer, we can have a separate customer uh, customer service base for that. Uh, of course, there'll be extra manpower that will be given, but that's the cost of doing business. Uh, we have chatbots and uh, virtual assistants that are already there uh, that have been implemented. A step further would be having it translated uh, to their regional language, preferable language. We can have a certain set of queries. So at the moment, what happens is uh, they throw out the same questions to everybody. Categorize them, basis products, basis customers. Uh, not all customers will be similar. Not all customers will be having the same queries. If we can collect some data beforehand for the, from the customer, the virtual assistant or the chat bots, I, bots, I feel will be more effective towards uh, preventing such disputes. Customer education is, is uh, a high priority topic here, I would say. Uh, there are certain governance issues or a changing landscape that happens or a regulatory guideline that comes in where it also affects the existing customers and you are supposed to change some, something about their terms of the loan. And what do you do about that? You can already see that there's going to be litigation or disputes about this. Uh, we can we can send out customer education. We can add this again to the virtual assistant queries that uh, you have anything about this. We can reach out to the customers, explaining them. Of course, they'll not be reading it, but there, there's there's at least uh, the basic thing that we can do. We can send out customer education materials. Uh, be regulatory compliant. Be prepared, better prepared in advance to to actually handle such queries from the customers. I think I think that's about it from my end on this. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Molly. Uh, maybe on a closing note, if uh, any of our co-panelists have any thoughts, want to you know add any further insights? Yeah. Yeah. I'll just add few points. Um, so if you see, um, the, the, there are three elements to a customer's issues. One is query, uh, before the uh, before it goes to the judicial process, uh, query request and grievances or complaints. So queries and requests can be managed or catered with the help of automation. But if you talk about grievances, complaints, there you need a you know balance or a mix of human interference and use of technology or automation because that will help you to uh, process a lot of data. There is a process data that is available so that helps to take care of. Uh, there are certain sensitive issues or if a customer is in distress, there you need a human touch just adding to what we were discussing. Uh, as far as regulatory uh, considerations are concerned, see already RBA ombudsman have started doing a uh, lot of uh, customer grievances which goes to the RBA's ombudsman, it's on a CMS portal. That is resolved on online these days, most of it. So the customer is not required to travel to office of the lender or office of the RBI ombudsman from wherever he's belong. He can do it online. So very extensively carried out. Uh, now, use of uh, technology or tech-driven process um, for resolving dispute, it also helps, you know, it brings out a lot of transparency, uh, uh, gives you experienced arbitrators through uh, the process that, uh, you know, Resolve has, and, you know, gives you uh, regular reminders for preparedness and participation. So, um, and with the era of digital lending, data protection, use of AI, ML, I think customers' awarenesses has also increased um, uh, for, you know, online lending. So, you know, as an endeavor, uh, what institutions need to, financial institutions need to, they need to provide customer comfort, uh, you know, to improve customer comfort, they need to provide an option for online arbitration um, uh, so that, you know, these uh, issues or disputes can be resolved uh, without any hassles in a timely manner. I think that's my I will just add to the Manoji's concern. See, the uh, RBI has given this particular portal for the you know, customer grievances and all. You have to simply go for login and giving the complaint and all. Similarly, we have RTI-related aspects. So, Pan India, you have a, you know, the online portal is available for RTI applications and RTI grievances. Not from the first appellate officers, you know, uh, PIO appellate officers and also then the CIC. Up to commissions also, you need not to go anywhere you have to have a, a digitally, digitally solutions for these all things. 
but before that you need to have a confidence among the customers you need to have a you know understanding believing of the customer that this particular platform or this particular digital process will definitely give me the justice and all that's all this is what the most requirement and this new mediations act which 2023 has uh, has already been implemented but still section 30 which deals with the online online mediations is still not notified perhaps you know the uh, it says you know uh, the the process and procedure for the online online mediations will be given through some rules and regulations so it will be a milestone for you know the 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 uh, financial industry as well as the other industry related to this particular disputes through mediations and all and it was a long demand pending for this i hope this will have a lot of solutions whatever you know the uh, tech uh, tech tech people are asking so these all things will be covered under this uh, this is the uh any other thoughts here swam or molly no i think it's great to see because creating technology solutions is one thing but having industry stalwarts on this panel really express how they also feel that this just does not benefit the lender but also benefits the borrower here today we heard a lot around how do we bring the borrower and how do we bring him up and center which is what the rbi also wants to do so i think it's great to have that and i think the intent is the first step to any innovation uh but the intent is there innovations will definitely follow yeah thank you sorry yeah, yeah sure just wanted to say it's it's easier to have a regulation but uh, it will build up slowly india will build and and i think most of us find comfort considering our customer base to hand actually handle it manually because uh, mostly are uh, come from tier 2 tier 2 tier 3 cities and uh, it it really needs it will take time to develop but it's not that we are actually ignoring our customers in any way uh, we can of course always step up and and do better through ai but uh, that will take time uh fine yeah thank you everyone and uh, i would like to thank the participants also be, for being so patient um with this i'll just close uh, this session uh the uh, just to you know sum up uh, the takeaways here you know it's uh, just that dispute resolution through these digital means will actually help the customer will actually facilitate our engagement with the customer will show the organization's commitment to ensure better customer service no longer you know banks and uh, financial services are uh, you know restricted to just pro uh, providing uh, services and products it's in fact a customer experience that we are you know looking to provide and i guess uh, online solutions and digital solutions uh, you know are a big way which will help us achieve that uh, with this thank you thank you everyone thanks elets yeah.